Thank you very much. I'm glad Michael's from Malaysia and he's my friend now, so he'll be nice to my corporation. <laughs> uh, I am um, thrilled to be able to introduce someone very special who I've just met. He's taught me a lot in a very short period of time. Um, Radha Vij from the United States of America. is a graduate from Columbia University with an embassy in journalism. She moved on to community media in New York and is now an associate director at Gutenberg Communications and has showed her passion for solving social issues through her work with the Grassroots Media Coalition Conference. She, works as, she has worked as an editor and columnist for India's daily newspaper, The Pioneer, and presently is helping the Foundation for the Art and Preservation of Embassies, in Embassies, which uses art to promote cross-cultural communication in US embassies to gain major media exposure. She's a very special woman, and I'm thrilled to welcome her to the One Year World Conference. Thank you, Tony. Hi, everyone. Let me start by saying that I agree with this resolution, but there are troubling lack of specific recommendations necessary for this statement to carry any significant weight. <laughs> this said, I think we all would agree that the news media should disseminate information that is accurate, ideologically neutral, and checks the balances of power. I think we all would further agree that the failures of media to do so have had dire consequences, as in the failure of the US media to counter false government claims of Iraqi weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> or the failure of US media to often explore connections between US multinational business strategy and increasing development problems. So I will just take a few minutes to map out something I can speak of from my professional life thus far, my personal experience and my education, and that is the state of the US news media. I'm briefly gonna pose three problems and suggest two areas for solution. One of the biggest problems in the US is that our news is becoming increasingly ideological and sensational. Just one example of this could be seen around presidential election time when the US news media furthered rumors that President Barack Obama was somehow affiliated with radical Islam. This, of course, exacerbated pre-existing U.S. Arab tensions. This can also be seen in the way that U.S. TV news outlets are increasingly defined by their ideological news. Just take one look at Rupert Murdoch's Fox News. This means that as news changes, consumers must work independently to dispel fact from opinion and to separate news from entertainment. Granted, this becomes increasingly complicated since social media has led to the rise of the opinion journalist and in the US, a shift away from journalistic institutions. The Pew Project for Excellence in Journalism has done a great study on this if you're interested in more information. A second major problem affecting the US news media is that the corporate ownership of media often means that news organizations have more loyalty to investors than to readers. To see a full list of US media ownership, I would direct you to explore the Columbia Journalism Review's Who Owns What Media Chart at cjr.org. And if your country doesn't have such a website, I would urge you to make one. Needless to say, these ownership patterns often create a hierarchy of profit incentives over reporting standards. What's worst is that these incentives are often exacerbated, exacerbated in moments of economic recession. A third related problem in the US is that a lack of adequate business models intensified by the recession has led to damaging cuts in news gathering, especially in regard to investigative print journalism. According to the US journalism organization Pointer, newspapers have reduced their newsroom spend by about $1.6 billion annually since 2004. This has very real consequences, as New York Times journalist Tim Arango might tell you. Tim has often written on how the lack of investigative budgets means fewer reporters addressing false imprisonments, locating DNA records, and stopping executions of the innocent. In short, fewer newsrooms saving lives. As a result, US news consumers must be aware of how private ownership and special interests affect the quality and use of public information available. Now, in terms of solutions to these problems, I think there are many creative ways being discussed in the US. However, for the sake of time, I will only identify two areas for further thought. First, we must reevaluate current business models in the US. We should shift our current models, our current private models, um, 
to ones which are backed by nonprofit entities or government subsidies, such as NPR in the US or the BBC in the UK. According to a 2006 Reuters poll, the BBC and CNN were voted the most trusted media brands globally, proving that government-backed media does not necessarily lose its credibility. Second, we must begin an intelligent discussion around journalist licensing in the US, one that respects our First Amendment and allows citizen journalists and social media to flourish outside of a licensed journalistic profession. We claim that journalism is the fourth estate, an industry as important to a functional democracy as judges, lawyers, doctors, etc. Yet all of the former require a rigorous process of testing, which makes them accountable to a set of industry approved standards. In the US, journalism does not. Proper licensing standards would make it harder for journalists to mix reporting with partisanship and would regulate the extent to which journalists can make claims without sufficient verification. It is a debate worth having in the US at any rate, instead of shying away. The point I would like to leave you with, everyone, is that when one country's media fails, we all suffer. There is no single industry that can so powerfully affect the way we relate to and perceive each other across nations the way that media can. I hope we can all go home and help make our media institutions better so that we view one another with the most respect and accuracy possible. Thank you.